come, we'll start the final chapter for NCRT class 8 that's human resources. Now this chapter on human resources would help us lay the foundation for population geography uh, or the details if we want to go into population geography. Now we have talked about the lot many resources in this class uh, with chapter uh, the class 8th of NCRT. Uh, we have talked about the agriculture, mineral industry. Now the key that we would be talking about is an individual or the human being which is considered as the ultimate resource and uh, the key aspect is every individual differs in either education, age, sex or the basic understanding level. Now what is the key that we are trying to explain with this diagram? Now of the every 100 people that exist in the world, those marked in dark blue represent the ones that live in Asia. Those with light blue represents the proportion of Europe. Then you have the percentage of Africa, the people living in South and Central uh, America, the people living in North America and finally one out of this whole lot who lives in Australia. So that shows us the various distribution or I could say uh, when we'll move forward, we'll talk about the ecumen and the non-ecumen zones of the population, which would help us understand where the population is concentrated and what are the major centers and why those are the major centers for population distribution. Now, coming on to the basic facts, you have 90% of the people who live merely on 10% of the area and these areas are also known as the ecumen zones. Then you have most of the population is concentrated towards the north hemisphere. You have three fourth of the total population that resides in Asia and Africa and 60% of the population live in only 10 of the nations of the world. Now what is population density? Number of people living per unit area would be the density of the population. So let's say I have two land areas here. The size of the land areas are these. I have two people living on a size of say 100 square kilometer of land. On the other hand, I have, I have drawn so many and there are nearly 50 people who live on a size of say um, 1 kilometer square of land. That means if I want to calculate the density for this, it would be number of people divided by the land. So it would be 50 persons per square kilometer. However, here it would be 2 by 100, that would be 1 by 50, that would be 0 0.02 persons per square kilometer. So I can say this would be a sparse region for the population. And this would be an excessive region, uh, region or a highly dense population region. Now, the average density worldwide is 45 persons per kilometer square, square kilometer. Now, among the major areas of population concentration, you have highest concentration in South Central Asia, followed by East Asia, followed by Southeast Asia. So, most of the students get confused here. Southeast Asia is not the highly dense population region, uh, South Central Asia is much denser as compared to Southeast Asia, which includes the countries of Malaysia and Thailand. Now, what are the factors that affect the population distribution on the earth? Now, definitely if there is a desert land or a ice frozen land or a glacier region, there would be uh, very less or I could say nominal population that lives there. However, if it's a fertile area drained by soil where you have good ab abundance of agriculture and economic activities, you would have higher number of population in that region. So geographic factors are the key factors or the primary responsible factors for distribution of population. They are governed by the climatic conditions. As I said, you have Sahara versus the polar region or the topography, you have the fertile riverine tracks where you have huge number of population. The type of soil, if the soil fertility is good, there would be more agriculture and more population density that would be there. Water availability and presence of mineral. So presence of mineral would again imply more of economic activity in terms of mining. 
so these are the geographic factors the next comes into line is the social factors that affects uh, the social behavior so for example pune i could say is affected by the social uh, factors because you have a kind of mingling of various cultures that could be seen some of the cities are known as cultural cities which have a kind of heritage value or a religious uh, religion value that is embedded uh, embedded into them so you have varanasi jerusalem vatican city are some of the examples then some of the cities are known for their economic activities for example mumbai which is a kind of financial capital of india you have osaka as we read it's the manchester of japan so you have huge number of cotton textile industries there so they are known for their economic activities and as a result you have higher population concentration because these regions can bring in more people for work now what is population change wherever we talk about population change there are two key words that we come across off and on the one is the increase in the population that is due to the birth rate and then you have the decrease in the population that is due to the death rate now these are the natural factors that lead to change in the population however there are artificial factors that are created by migration migration means movement of people from one place to another so if you are increasing the number it would be i for increasing and i for immig immigration so you have immigration and that would lead to increase in the population so what we have the arrow about talks about population and then you would have e migration that is moving out of the people from the region and that would lead to decrease in the population so both these factors affect the net to net change into the population now if you can see the demographics here in 1820 you had only 1 billion population worldwide in 150 years it became 3 billion in 1970 and in only 30 years that's by 1999 the population doubled and it became 6 billion so that's the pace at which the population is growing worldwide now as i said birth rate is the live births per thousand and death rate is calculated as deaths per thousand now migration we have already talked about and the natural change is the difference between the birth rate minus death rate so if the birth rate is say 100 and death rate is 80 that means there is a gain of 20 so there would be a natural increase of 20 so here this diagram tries to explain the same concept so if you have birth rate that is heavier or more than the death rate you would have increase in population if both are equal then you would have a steady or stable population if you have birth rate less than death rate then you would have decrease in population now again what we are talking about is the natural increase then artificial increase is uh, related to the migration so you have immigration is greater than e migration that would lead to increase in population if e migration is equal to e migration that would be uh, a kind of steady population if e migration the number of people moving in are less than the number of people moving out that would lead to decrease in the population so this would be the population change caused by migratory factors now next is some of the important highlights kenya you have higher population growth rate in terms of high birth rate as well as high death rate so you have high mortality rate death rate is also known as mortality rate so you have higher mortality rates there then in united kingdom you have both low birth rate and low death rate japan and bangladesh are the areas which are considered as highly populated regions however japan is a kind of economically developed while bangladesh is a kind of ldc or less developed nation now what does population composition include Popul uh, population composition include the structure of population when we say the structure of population it would include uh, the age the people who are in the working class so i can say 0 to 15 16 to 64 and 65 and above 
Now this two would be the dependent population and this population would be the working population or I could say the economically active population who can generate revenue or bring in revenue and the children and the old age would be considered as a dependent population. So that is where you consider age. Then you have gender, male, female, employment, the level of education, the level of income and the health facilities. Now based on these you have the population pyramid we also call this, uh, call this as the age 6 pyramid. Now in this pyramid what we try to understand, it's important to understand here is on one side you have males, on the other side you have females and the vertical line shows the age. So you have the minimum age group say 0 to 5 and 75 plus. So that's the range you are going on. So in a area where you have a wide base that means you have very high birth rate and very low death rate because the top is very narrow that means you have a high increase in population. So this is a kind of rapidly expanding nation then you have an expanding nation which is this, you have a stationary growth rate where you have a kind of stable population that could be seen for the young people as well as the economically active section and the old age and finally you have a contracting population, contracting population that means you have a negative birth rate and this is common nowadays in the European nations where you have the negative growth rate and you have less number of uh, young people you have dependent population that is growing on and you have the working population that is ample or abundant there. Now uh, the examples where the death rate is increasing is India. A region of high death rate and high uh, birth rate would be Kenya and a region of low birth rate would have a narrow base as you can see in the last diagram. So this is the basis for the population pyramid which includes understanding the population age wise and gender wise. So you have the population for males and the females and the various age groups that are de determined or explained here. So with this we cover the last chapter for NCRT class 8. We will be starting with NCRT class 9 in the next lectures. Have a good day ahead.